Crystal Gale Smith with All Things Thoroughbred. And today I'd like to welcome our guest, Erin O'Keefe. Hi there. Erin, tell us a little bit about yourself, what your thoroughbred background is, and what it is that you currently do. So I am not from around here originally. I came down and went to the University of Kentucky, uh, majored in equine science and management. Uh, since graduating from there, I worked sales for TaylorMade and then was fortunate to get a job there in their broodmare division. Um, I went from there to Rune Riddle working as a vet tech in the clinic and then uh, while I was there also worked part-time in the office at a small thoroughbred farm um, and then worked at Darby Dan as the sales coordinator. Most recently I was at uh, Millennium Farms as the customer relations manager and I recently started in my newest position as the director of operations for Taste of Victory Stables. Um, and my current position, I'm running a racing syndicate. So we focus on bringing new people in, giving them a great ownership experience at a very low cost. So shares are only $2,000. We want to make everybody have the ch chance to experience all of this. $2,000, guys. All right, Erin, so we talked about what your history is and how you came about to be in the thoroughbred business with your education, all the different farms, and now the racing syndicate that you work for. Those are super exciting things, but I did hear that you just got back from the Pimlico Park. Tell us about that weekend. I did. So I, it was a bit of a whirlwind. I flew out there. I did Black Eyed Susan Day. I did the Preakness and flew back into Lexington via Orlando because that makes a lot of sense. Um, so it's a little crazy, but it was it was so cool to get to see it. Um, I've been to one Belmont. I've been to I think seven or eight Derbies now. Of course, been to Keeneland. So to get to see that racetrack, um, you know, it's been in the news a lot. It's older. It's historic. It's where the Preakness has always been. Um, so it's really cool to get to be a part of that history as we move forward and, you know, don't really know where the Preakness might be headed. Um, so to get to see all of that, I think they did a good job with having, um, you know, I wasn't in the infield, but to see all the stuff they had going on there certainly looked like everyone was having a good time. A good time, huh? Um, and gosh, the weather cooperated so well. It was, it was an incredible weekend. Wonderful. Erin, so we've heard about your amazing weekend you just had at Chemical Park and all your history. So take us back, if you could. Would you change anything in the course of time and fate with getting into the thoroughbred business? And what kind of advice would you give to our viewers out there who might be looking to get into the horse industry? So I think I would advise someone to do something differently. I wouldn't say <laughs> I'd change anything because I'm quite happy with where I am right now. But, um, you know, I went to UK and I think that getting that background in education was great. Um, but in this industry, so much of what you're coming into is people who value experience and hard work and that you, you know, I clean stalls. Does that really translate to what I've done since then? Not directly, but it gives me that credibility within the industry that you came from the bottom, you worked your way up. So I think if you go the route of, you know, getting that four-year degree at one of these programs that has it like UK, um, really take advantage of those internships that they offer and make connections in the industry as early as you can. Um, there's a lot of great programs like the Kemi program, um, the Thoroughbred Women's Network does some, is starting to do some scholarships oh. to kind of help, help get people, well, women down here and working because, you know, I'm from Detroit. I couldn't really just pack up and come down here. I'd have to, I had to be able to pay my bills and, you know, make that all work. So I think that background at UK was great. Um, having a degree kind of showed everyone, hey, I'm smart enough to do that. Um, but always work hard, never be afraid of hard work, no job is beneath you, um, and if you have that attitude, I think people will recognize and respect that, and more opportunities will come. Great, so basically, if I could sum up everything that you're saying, wouldn't it be fair to say that education is great, but it also makes sense to make the networking connections and also have the fortitude to go in and roll up your sleeves and not be afraid Absolutely. to get dirty? Absolutely. There's no way to replace the hard work and the hands-on experience you get in jobs here. And never be afraid to start at the bottom and see how far you can climb. How some way and making that happen. Exactly. Because, you know, when you're not in Lexington, it can be a little tricky to, to know how to get up, down here and to get started. And, you know, if the barrier is financial, we want to help with that. If it's that you don't know where to look for a job, you know, there's so many farms that are hiring. But, you know, if you don't know where to look, you wouldn't know. All right, so you heard Erin talk a little bit and touch briefly on the Women's Thoroughbred Network. 
Um, Erin's going to share a little bit about that, and she feels like that attributes to what's led her here where she is today. Give us a little bit about that. So the Thoroughbred Women's Network is a fairly new initiative um, started by just a group of women in the industry that saw that it is difficult to break in, and it can be a little more difficult if you're a female and wanting to kind of offer a helping hand um, in terms of making connections and things like that. So I was laughing. My current position, I was connected to the managing partners via um, Carrie Brogdon of Select Sales, okay. uh, and we met at a mentor mixer for the Thoroughbred Women's Network. So they work to connect um, people coming into the industry with kind of people that are a little more established, give them that opportunity to network, to learn, um, you know, to hear about jobs and opportunities and things like that. And um, as they grow, the plans are there's going to be some scholarships available. Um, mm -hmm. It's totally a nonprofit. So there's Erin, it's been an exciting afternoon and a great interview with you. Appreciate you taking the time out. But right now, you're currently with Taste of Victory Racing Stables. So we'd like to know a little bit about that, how the public can go, be involved if they would like to participate and have a share. We'll put the link below. But tell us a little bit about that and how they can get involved. So um, Taste of Victory Stables or tovstables.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We are all over social media. Um, and if you're interested in getting involved, like I said, our shares are $2,000 a piece. Right now, we are actually getting ready to launch a group in Ocala. We're going to pick up a couple of uh, yearlings, and we're going to split the group. So we're going to pin hook and sell as a two-year-old with part, and then have one to race, or maybe even two to race, and uh, carry on with. So if that's something that would interest you guys, we'd love to hear from you. Um, if you go to our website, there's a submission form. You can also sign up for our mailer if you just kind of want to follow us along. We send out emails about once or twice a week and give you stable updates, let you know what's going on about our different events that we do, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. All right, guys, so you've got to hear from Erin O'Keefe today at Taste of Victory Racing Stables. This is your opportunity to get involved, be hands-on, be part of an ownership, and watch your horse along. They'll keep you updated, and you can follow Erin O'Keefe also as well at Facebook. And we look forward to seeing you on our next episode at All Things Thoroughbred. Thank you, Erin. How does that We need to start doing outtakes on all things.